everyone, it's Heather, and I'm back after my weekend trip. That's the reason why I was absent last week, and I'm still getting over a cold, so I can hear it in my voice, and I'm my sinuses are all stuffed up, but like when the story happened last week, I was just about over it, but like just barely over the cold. Like this thing messed me up. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to adjust the screen because it's kind of... There we go. More me. <laughs> Anyways, the whole purpose of me going away was I went to Ohio to see a show for my mom's birthday. Um, her birthday was on the 28th, and so was the show, which was pretty awesome. And the show was, it was 50 years ago today with Mickey Dolenz, Christopher Cross, Todd Rundgren, Joey Molland of Badfinger and Jason Chef from Chicago. All amazing dudes. So talented. And that was the show in Ohio. Akron, Ohio is where we were, was the closest one to us. And it was like a four hour drive away. But we made a weekend trip of it. It was really fun. I was actually surprised that she wanted to get tickets for it because it was that far away. You know, like, I don't really expect her to go that far for a show, but I think the farthest we've gone is, like, Montreal, which is maybe a seven or eight hour drive. It's insane, but I love Montreal. Anyways, um, the show was at this really gorgeous, gorgeous theater called the Akron Civic Center, and you walk in and it's just, I'll put pictures in there, but it was just the most gorgeous old building. <laughs> And you could tell they were like restoring it because in the lobby there was like you could you could see a, a point where it was like all bright and just beautiful and so colorful and then there was like a straight line from where they had cleaned it and then beyond that was a little bit murkier but you could still tell that it was like beautiful underneath the dirt you know <laughs> Anyways, I'll insert the pictures. You'll see how awesome it is. I video bombed a video that my mom took of it. <laughs> When we got inside, we got there super early because my mom had got meet and greet passes. I think she just got them because she wanted to meet Jason Chef. She totally had a crush on him and it was adorable. <laughs> but they we were waiting for like a long time and like they checked us all in and when they had us gathered for like we were finally ready for the meet and greet, they gave us a little heads up. They were like, so they're not going to be doing any autographs and everyone got so pissed off at that because almost everyone had brought in something that they wanted signed. I mean there was pe there was someone carrying like a guitar case that they wanted the guitar signed. There was people like left and right holding record albums and it was it was kind of funny to see them all just like what what? And we weren't allowed to take pictures with our own cameras because they had a camera that they were going to be taking nice pictures of us with. I don't know, it felt very assembly line-like. I think they limited the meet and greet to like 50 people, which is kind of a lot, but at the same time, I don't know. It didn't leave much room for like personal interactions. I also have no idea how to interact with musicians, even though I've met a handful of them. So... <laughs> I was like, oh my god, what do I say to these people? I didn't even recognize Joey Mullen at first. So when he was talking to me, I was like, yeah. And it's totally empty head of like, I like your accent. Because <laughs> he's English. Oh my god, he has such a nice accent. <laughs> he is very charming. 
But anyways, they line us all up, and we're kind of like in the middle of the line, so I didn't see them right off the bat, but like basically there was a line, and then like at the very top of the line there was like a little part to the side where they were like standing against the wall, and the the first thing that I noticed was that Christopher Cross was not there. And I was really sad about that because I was stoked to meet Christopher Cross because I really like his music. So that bummed me out. But other than that, everyone was super sweet at the meet and greet. We were actually talking with fans in the line and in the lobby and once we got to our seats and everyone was so sweet. It was fun. It was so fun. And when I got to the meet and greet, when I finally got up to the front of the line, I let my mom go first, like we did separate, and she like immediately hugged Jason's chef. It was really cute. She told him it was her birthday and everything. And when I got up there, I had no idea what to do, but I just had like butterflies. Like here before the meet and greet, I was thinking, oh, I don't really have a crush on Mickey anymore, so like I'm gonna be cool. It's gonna be fun. And then when I got to the meet and greet, it was all like, oh my god, it's him, it's him, it's him, you know? <laughs> so, that was interesting. <laughs> like, I didn't really know what to say to these people. But, like, I went and shook their hands one by one. I might have slighted Todd Rundgren because they were standing in a line, like, Todd, Mickey, Joey, and Jason. And the first person's hand to shake was Mickey. <laughs> Like, there was like a split second of hesitation, like, Todd, Mickey, Todd, Mickey, you know? And, I don't know, it was awkward. But, like, in the pictures, which I'm going to put on the screen, you can tell why I was there. I'm, like, cheesing up on his shoulder, like... So happy to meet you. By the way, I love Mickey's shirt, and I told him that... His Nielsen Schmilson shirt, because of his buddy Harry Nielsen, was awesome. <laughs> but it was, it was a very quick meet and greet. I wish I had the cute story or something, but it was very quick. It was nice though. It was nice putting my head on Mickey's shoulder. <laughs> Look at me, I'm like a, like a teenager again. I almost swore, by the way. It just like comes out of me sometimes. <laughs> So anyways, then we went to our seats and everything, and we were like, oh my gosh, this auditorium is great. Actually, wait, before we went to our seats, we still had time before they were, like, opening the doors and everything for the rest of the people, and they gave us, like, goodie bags for the meet and greet, which is awesome because it was not cheap, like, it was more expensive than the tickets. So it was nice to have something from it. We got a tote bag, a t-shirt... There was like a little laminated ticket thing with like, it was 50 years ago today and like all the players on it and a poster of like the logo from their tour and their four signatures. Again, Christopher Cross couldn't be bothered. I get the feeling that he's kind of like more private and shy, like Neil Partnish. So... Not really judging him, just disappointed. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was really cool to get all those goodies. Plus it meant that I didn't have to buy merch, because <laughs> I already had some. Anyways, we got to the auditorium. It was gorgeous. And the show was amazing. So basically the whole concept of the show was they were... It was a tribute to the Beatles' White Album. And they were singing songs off the album. And in the middle, they each did two songs of their own, like, solo, which was awesome because it's like, when you're going to see those people, you want to hear their hits, you know? So it was like a little bit of both. And I would like to insert clips from the show because I took a buttload of video because it was just that amazing. But I'm a little concerned about copyright just because we're dealing with not only the Beatles copyright, but five other musicians off of varying record labels. So there's a lot of room for 
people potentially coming for us if I do that. There is one clip that I want to put in there. Um, it's a little bit later in the day because I recorded this the same day that I'm going to upload it. But I spoke to other members of the Wool Hat Club and they said it's kind of fine if I include clips. So I did just that. There's a couple times in the video when I talk about how I'm not going to be uploading any clips. So just disregard that. I put a few in there and unfortunately the audio on that is extremely loud. And I was not able to turn that down. So every time there's a clip inserted, there's a warning in front of it. And you should heed that warning and turn your volume down considerably when that comes up. Because it was a great show, but it was very loud, like every concert is. So I just wanted to put in a little disclaimer that the clips are there and they are loud. You've been warned. I'm sorry. All I can do is warn you. <laughs> it's very short. It's during the song Sexy Sadie, which was about the Maharishi. Todd Rundgren came out, like, dressed like he was going to India. You know, a little flower lay, whatever. And he was, like, waving around a bouquet of flowers, and then he tossed it in the audience. And then at some point, he... There was like a huge stack of flowers off to the side, and he grabbed the whole armload of it and threw it into the audience. And that's the clip that I'm going to show you right now. <laughs> just remembered this but another note on the whole flowers thing was that after Todd threw it into the audience everyone was super sweet enough to start throwing it back and like passing them all around to everyone so we all end up getting flowers and my mom and I got to bring some back which was really awesome and I didn't expect that because like we were not that close to them <laughs> so that was awesome Todd was so fun throughout the show. He also sang Helter Skelter, and I'm really surprised that he didn't blow out his vocal cords. Just, he was going so hard. But my, probably my favorite moment of his was, I'm going to insert pictures, because I, I got decent pictures. We were kind of like in the middle of things, so like we weren't crazy close, but we were close enough for my camera was like, I think I can see these guys. So... Some of my pictures came out decent. You can tell who's who. But during the song, Continuing Story of Bungalow Bill, Todd came out looking like this. And he had a squirt gun that he was squirting the audience with. It was the funniest thing. Like, that man is just made of pure chaos, and I loved it. Another moment that was probably my favorite, or no, I'm going to say two more favorite moments from the show. Christopher Cross singing Martha My Dear. Let me tell you, that's one of my favorite Beatles songs. I hadn't heard it in ages, so I was like, oh my gosh. He hit every note amazingly. Like, I took a video of it, and normally when you're at a concert, something will sound amazing and then when you go back to listen to it on video it's not as great and you're like wait they sounded awesome in the show because it's like not great recording equipment on your dinky little phone so I was not having high expectations for my videos but like even playing it back on there you hit the notes perfectly and I really want to put in a video of that Hold your head up, you sing again Look what you've done When you find yourself in the enemy Help yourself to a better one's around you Sing again Another favorite moment was 
is during the song Julia, which is not really a song I tend to gravitate towards because it's kind of slow and quiet and sappy, but Jason Sheff was singing it and Christopher Cross was backing him up. So I sing a song of And they sounded amazing together. They really did. Like, Christopher Cross was, like, killing it that night. Another thing about Christopher, I know this is supposed to be about Mickey and the fact that I met him, but if you're not familiar with his music, he tends to have, like, on his album covers, he's always got, like, a flamingo or something. And I guess that's, like, his favorite animal or something? If I had to guess, I would say that, but... Uh, they all had like stands with iPads on them. And I don't know if that was like set list or chords or lyrics or whatever, but anyways, they had like a little stand with like some help, which I get it, it's not what they're used to performing. But on the back of his, Christopher Cross had a little stuffed flamingo. And it was the cutest thing ever. <laughs> it was like I wasn't expecting that. But anyways, I'm going to put in a couple pictures from the show, and I guess I'm going to wrap it here and just say that it was an amazing night. And I did end up getting the pictures from the meet and greet, obviously, because they there was like a link that they had sent through email when my mom got the tickets. But like that night after the show, we were able to find it, which was awesome because they uploaded it really quick. It's not the most flattering pictures of me, but... It's a picture of me and Mickey Dolenz and Todd Rundgren and Joey Mullen and Jason Schaff and that's all that matters. <laughs> if you haven't seen the show already, you have to. It was amazing. They were all at like top form. One thing I was not surprised by, Mickey singing the song Why Don't We Do It in the Road. Why don't we do it in the road? He also did Rocky Raccoon. Also not surprised. And when they went to do their bows and everything, they they were like bowing while the song Good Night was playing from the White Album, of course. But it was like the Beatles version. It was just like playing in the background while they were like moving goodbye to everyone. And I thought it was a really cute way on the show. So I'm really gonna end it here. But <laughs> it was amazing. Go out and see it because it was amazing. And I will see you guys next week. This whole month of October I'm planning to do my reviews on Halloween themed episodes of the Monkees and I know there were enough for the month so that's gonna be fun. Gonna get me in the Halloween mood just a little bit. So I will see you next week. Bye everyone! I'm